So today's session is, uh, the topic is styling blocks. So we have two presentations by Michael Burridge uh, and Justin Tedlock. And uh, if you have questions, drop them in the chat, um, or you can use the hand raise icon. Um, and I'm not sure, Michael and Justin, if you want people to wait, uh, or maybe just at the beginning of your session, just let us know if you would prefer people to wait till the end, or um, just add, add, ask questions as things go. Um, so I will introduce our speaker today. First one up is Michael. Um, Michael, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm Michael. I'm based in the UK. Um, I work in developer relations. Um, been a web developer. Well, actually, I started working with web development back in the 90s when the web was still uh, in its early years. But uh, I've taken breaks and uh, had a uh, and other careers in between and then came back to web development about 10 years ago which is when i discovered wordpress and uh yeah and then made the move into devrel or developer relations awesome and uh our other speaker today is justin tadlock justin would you like to introduce yourself a little bit yeah sure so i'm justin um, i'm based in uh alabama in the united states I've been in the WordPress space since uh, around 2005. Uh, That's back when I was in college. Um, I've worked as a theme developer, plugin developer, a business person, writer, a little bit of everything. Uh, and so now I'm in uh, developer relations alongside uh, both Michael and Ryan. Um, so that's uh, ho hopefully we'll get a bit of DevRail done today. Awesome. Thank you, Justin. Uh, okay, so just before we, we get in, I'll do a couple of uh, quick announcements. So WordPress 6.3 is in active development. Um, I think they just released a release candidate. Uh, so if you're in, in, interested in getting involved in that, I, I just dropped a link in the in the chat. Uh, WordCamp US is the next major flagship, August 24th to the 26th. Uh, and there will be a, a community summit that precedes that. Uh, the next WordCamp Asia has now been scheduled uh, March 7th to the 9th, uh, 2024. Here's a link to that. And if uh, there's lots of local WordCamps starting to be um, scheduled post-pandemic, so if you're interested, there is a link to WordCamp Central, central.wordcamp.org, where you can see the full list of upcoming WordCamps. Um, without further ado, I'm going to stop rambling and hand the presentation over to Michael. Mm -hmm. Just one more announcement. Uh, Gutenberg 16.3 was just released about an hour ago, or a couple of hours ago. So that's now available. OK, thanks, Ryan. Um, uh, let me just share my screen. Bear with me a second. OK, you can all see. You all see the, the slide, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, blocks that have complex markup, and then I'm going to demonstrate a way in which you can give users control over how to style child elements of blocks with complex markup. So Block Supports is great. Uh, block Supports allows you to easily add common styling options to your block like color and spacing properties such as margin and padding. And when you add these supports properties to your block.json file, your users get control in the setting controls in the setting sidebar so that they can select, for example, text and background colors uh, or the padding that gets applied to the block. But these only work at the root level of the block which is fine for simple blocks, such as a paragraph block or a heading block. But what do you do if your block has much more complex markup? Block supports only targets the wrapping element of the block, so the outer div here. All the internal elements will inherit the colors that the user selected, and the margin and padding that they've defined will only be applied to the outer div. Uh, but what if you want to give your users options to change the styling of the header element, for example, or even just change the color of the H2? Or perhaps you would like to give your users the ability to style the summary element separately from the details element. 
or indeed do all of this. If your block has complex markup like this, it's not immediately obvious how you can enable users to style the inner elements. But there is a way, and that is by leveraging CSS custom properties, uh, which are also known as CSS variables. CSS custom properties are defined by prefixing the name with two dashes and then assigning a value to it. Then once defined, they can be used anywhere in your CSS style sheet by using the var keyword and referencing the name of the CSS custom property that you'd previously defined. So here, the H2 element will have the color midnight blue as that is the value of the CSS custom property that's being assigned to the text color, namely dash dash primary color. They're often called CSS variables rather than by their proper name of CSS custom properties because they work like variables in other languages in that they store a value. So this is the equivalent of writing this. But by defining values in CSS custom properties, you can reuse them across the, your style sheet to ensure consistency across your site. For example, if you have to conform to a design system. Also, if you need to make a change to a value, you only need to do it once in the custom property. You don't have to search through the entire style sheet to find every instance of the value you want to change. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with all of this. I'm sure you've all used custom properties. You know all about custom properties and have used them. But you're probably used to defining them at the root of the style sheet like this, and then using them elsewhere in the style sheet. But you don't need to define your CSS custom properties in the root element. You can define them in any element. And they're then available to any child element of that element. So going back to our complex block markup, we can do something like this in our CSS. Notice that we're defining our CSS custom properties at the level of the wrapping div element rather than at the root level, as shown a couple of slides ago. So the div here has a hard-coded background color, which happens to be dark blue and a text color of white. Whereas the header, a child element, has a background which is lighter blue and a text color of yellow, which it gets from the CSS custom properties defined at the top of the CSS there, which gives us a block that looks like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. But this is still isn't very useful as everything is still hard coded into the CSS and it's still not user configurable. But it does lead to another thought. If we can define our CSS co custom properties at the level of the wrapping element in the CSS, does that mean we could actually inline them in our markup? Well, actually, yes, it does. So rather than having the CSS custom variables in the style sheet file like this, we can instead put them in the markup like this. So here we've removed the CSS custom properties from the CSS file. And instead we've put them in line in a style attribute in the div tag. But we're still referencing the CSS custom properties from the style sheet file. Yes, it all still works exactly the same. Now, we know that the block editor inline styles when you use the block supports properties that we looked at a bit earlier. As you can see in the screenshot of the rendered markup from a block. And we now know that we can inline CSS custom properties and still reference them from the style sheet file. So the combination of these gives us the idea for a strategy to enable styling of inner elements by users. What we need to do is get the values of block attributes and inline them into the block wrapper element as the values for CSS custom properties. And for this, we can use the use block props hook. So let's see how we can do that. For this example, let's assume that you want to give the user the option to change the header background color and also the text color of the H2. In this example, I am focusing on colors, but the principles that I'm demonstrating here can be used for any CSS property 
uh, borders, you know, so the color width radius of a border, spacing properties such as margin and padding, or even transforms like rotate and scale, any CSS property you can think of, these principles will apply to, but I'm just focusing on colors just to keep it simple. So we're going to need some attributes. We need to define a couple of attributes in block.json, one for the header background color and another for the h2 that's inside the header. So I'm calling this header background color and header heading color. If you wish, you can opt to give the attributes some default values so that some styling is initially applied even before the user starts changing things. That's always a good idea to provide default values. Then over in our edit function, though actually edit is technically not a function, it's a comp component. So in our edit component, we need to get the attributes by destructuring them from the object passed to the edit component. Then we define a styles const, which takes as its value an object. In that object, we define names for the object properties that are the names of the CSS custom properties we want to use. You can see that they have the double dash prefix that distinguishes them as CSS custom properties. And then for the values, we assign the corresponding attributes. And now for the magic bit, we pass an object to the used block props hook. This object has a style property, which takes as its value the styles object that we created above. Then just as used block props spreads classes and block supports props onto the wrapping element, use block props will also spread the contents of the object passed to it when the block is rendered. So in this case, the wrapping div will get a style attribute with inline styles. And the inline styles that form the contents of that attribute will be the two CSS custom properties with the values received from the block attributes. Which you can see if we inspect the element and you can see that used block props has added a class and also turned the object that we created with the CSS custom properties and attribute values into a style attribute on the div. So we've achieved exactly what we set out to do. We've inlined our CSS custom properties with the values from the block attributes. Then if we look at the style sheet, we just make sure that we target the relevant child elements in the style sheet and then reference the CSS custom properties that we defined in the object in the edit component. And then bam, it all works. Now that's working in the editor, but not in the front end. To make it work in the front end, we do exactly the same in the save function. We destructure the attributes, create the styles object with the CSS custom properties and the attribute values. Uh, both, notice that both here and in the edit component, I explicitly referenced at attributes dot attribute name. So here attributes dot header background color and attributes dot header heading color. But you could of course destructure the, the attributes first if you wanted to, and that would make the code there a little bit cleaner. And we pass the styles object to the use block props hook. So all exactly the same as in the edit component, except in the case of the save function, it's use block props dot save. When the block is rendered in the front end, it uses the same style sheet as the editor. And so since the CSS variables are referenced there, it all works nicely in the front end too. So that's all well and good, except that all the examples I've shown you so far have been JavaScript and offer a static block. For a, dyn for a dynamic block, it's kind of the same, but also a bit different. So let's take a look at that. There's a couple of ways to create a dynamic block. You could define a render callback function and pass the attributes to it is one way. The other way is a, the more modern way, and that's the method I'm going to use here. That is to define a render file in the render property of your blocks block.json file, and then create the PHP that will do the server-side rendering. An advantage of doing it this way is that the render file receives the attributes automatically. 
So you can just reference the attributes object. And in fact, because it's PHP, attributes isn't actually an object in the way that it is with JavaScript. In PHP, it's actually an associative array. So the syntax is slightly different. What's different for here with dynamic blocks is that when we define styles, it stores a string rather than an object. So if you recall, uh, when we previously passed an object to the use block props hook in the in JavaScript in the edit and save functions, yeah, that we passed an object. What we need to do here is pass a string. So we need to literally build the string that's going to be passed to the style attribute of the wrapping div. So one thing to notice here, because we're literally building the string that will populate the style attribute on the div, we need to put the semicolon that separates each of the CSS variables explicitly into the string. Also notice that we're concatenating the two lines into a single string. And then having built the string, just as we passed the styles object Sorry, just as we pass style to a style property in the object passed to the use block props hook in the edit and save components, here we pass styles, the style string. So we pass styles, yeah, the style string to a style property in an associative array, which in turn is passed to the get block wrapper attributes. And get block wrapper attributes in the PHP performs a similar function to use block props hook in JavaScript in that it will echo the CSS custom properties as inline styles onto the div when the block is rendered. Then the block, which this time is a dynamic block. So uh, remember that it's been server-side rendered. will look exactly the same when rendered in the front end because it's using exactly the same style sheet with exactly the same CSS properties. And that's it. All that then remains is to add some controls to the inspector control sidebar and some on change functions to allow the user to then update the attributes. And then those in child, at child elements or the internal elements of our complex block can be styled by the end user. And that's me done. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. Um, does anyone have any questions for Michael? Uh, oh, Jose Guerrero is raised their hand. Um, do you like to uh, unmute and chat? It's just a or... clapping emoji. Oh, clapping. I'm so... sorry. I thought it was a raised hand. I don't know how to use Zoom, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Jose. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, so if there's any questions, feel free to uh, raise your hand and unmute or drop it in chat, and I can ask the question. Um, Otherwise, I didn't see any come through in chat. Um, we do have a prepared question, Michael, if you'd like to start there. Um, so I'll sure. start there. So, the, so can you do inline styles as a text string in JS the way that you do in PHP? Yes, you can. I wouldn't recommend it. You can do it, but what you need to do, um, you could build up the string in, in JavaScript, but you can't pass it to the use block props hook. You'd have to, when you define your your bl block, um, you could add a style attribute to the the wrapper element, but that needs to come after the use block props hook, because the use block props hook will put a style element on, uh, regardless. And if you have your style attribute on your wrapping element before the use block props hook, it'll get overwritten. So you need to put your, your elements, say your wrapper element, say a div, then spread the use block props on it, and then put your style attribute with the string that you've created. But it's clunky, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend using the, um, the way I showed, put, the, put your styles into a, an object, pass that object to a style, property on the object that gets passed to the used block props hook. So yes, it's possible, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Um, 
Well, I don't see any any more questions. I haven't. I don't think anyone's raised a hand. So no, I don't um, see anything. Maybe I'll just wait a, another minute or two, or uh, maybe we've got about thirty-seven minutes left. So um, maybe we will just uh, hand it over to Justin. If anyone does have questions about Michael's presentation, drop them in chat, and we can um, ask them um, at the end. So sure, I'll so, be here for the whole hour. So. So without further yeah, ado, there, there, Justin. Sorry, there will be plenty of time also for to ask Michael after uh, what I do. But um, so uh, I'm going to take I'm going to take a different uh, approach to what we're doing today um, than, than what Michael did. Um, so I'm gonna we're gonna do some like a little bit of live coding today. Actually, I'm gonna share my screen and. Just closing a couple of things. Um, so, as a, a primarily a theme author, uh, I get angry with block developers sometimes um, because, uh, as Michael showed, you know, uh, he used CS, CSS custom properties to do some really neat things uh, within his own blocks. But as a theme author, uh, he uh, there's no easy way for me to control that from like a theme JSON file. Um, and that's why I get angry with uh, plugin developers and block developers sometimes is because they're not, not because uh, they're doing bad things. It's sometimes they're not thinking through the use cases of uh, how can I really make this easier on a theme author to like extend my block, like set up some defaults and you know, make it like integrate it with their theme in a better way. And this is particularly true for like complex blocks. Um, so I'm pulling up a, um, this is a plugin that I've created a, a, a sort of complex with the markup and so on. So progress bar block. Um, and uh, I'll share that in the uh, chat if, uh, uh, I, after I get through, but so we're gonna just uh, show, uh, use it here really quick. And I do need to move, let me move. I have video controls in my way, there we go. All right, so this is just a simple progress bar. Um, let's add uh, a few, a few values. So I'm gonna add a goal. Um, say uh i don't know what's a good goal say writing streak or something fire uh, writing streak and let's say we want to make this there this kind of a fun block uh, so i've been writing for 10 days i actually have to show units and day. All right, so we got a running streak of 10 days. That's pretty neat. All right, um, there's a few things here in this block that are kind of styled by the plugin. There's some defaults like say the height, the background color, and the foreground color of the uh, progress bar. And there's no easy way for like uh, me as a plugin, uh, like on the plugin side to figure out how, like, how do I get the right colors? And like, what are the defaults? Um, and that's really a design decision that should happen like for the theme author. All right, uh, so in my style.css uh, CSS for my plugin, and you can also integrate this directly into like your block edits uh, as Michael showed. Um, but I'll, I'm going to work just from the style sheet file, just uh, for simplicity. So there are several, um, uh, I actually have several like custom properties that can be overwritten by a theme. But there are certain ways, like you have to name your uh, CSS custom properties uh, a certain way to make these work. All right, so like for example, here's uh, the gap property is uh, actually controls the gap between these, like the label and the actual progress bar. And uh, I thought like a 0 0.5 uh, REM, that's 
a really standard, but what if a theme author wants to change this? Like, like they want it a little wider or a little narrower. That's up to them. And the important part, and I, I'm sorry for the uh, lots of dashes here, but um, we'll we'll get to that. Um, so let's hop over to like uh, my themes theme.json file. In it, uh, there is a settings, and then underneath settings, there's a custom. And this is a, a really fun thing to play around with. Um, so I've created, uh, like my, my plugin is gonna integrate with, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm gonna type this out. Uh, like I can set custom properties or, you know, custom values for my plugin. So the gap was the one. So the, let's just make a really big gap for demonstration and hopefully this works. Um, and we'll get to an explanation. All right, so I've saved that. All right, so this is just, um, my screen's taking a while to reload. All right, so there's a huge gap there now between the elements. Not exactly pretty, but um, it allows the theme author just to set like some really, you know, basic, uh, you know, defaults. And these, uh, by the way, can also be overridden in this specific plugin. Um, yeah, like there's a block spacing and you can set that. Uh, the user can also set it. Um, the the goal here is primarily to make sure that there's a way for theme also, authors to set defaults. Um, and if you've never used uh, the uh, custom key in uh, a theme JSON, uh, this is a great way to like you uh, like integrate it with plugins because not uh and theme json uh, it only supports uh, uh for example if i want to I have a ton of stuff um uh, in here but let's say i wanted to like just style a block it only supports certain things like color uh border um uh, spacing and so on but if you have custom things there's no way no standard way except for to add them under the uh settings.custom key all right, so some of the other things we have, uh, let's just update this. Um, some of the other things we have here are uh, like a foreground color and a background color for, I didn't say my thing, JSON, but let's uh, just test this out. Uh, foreground, foreground color. And so I want this to match my theme. Uh, and I already have some presets uh, for this. Uh, so you're trying to think of the names of them. Foreground colors, so let's see, primary, subtle. And I can't type when I'm uh, talking, apparently. Around. And just bear with me one second. Uh, contrast and hopefully this actually works uh, so we're gonna save that theme json and we're going to uh oh i hit the wrong uh hit the wrong reset uh refresh button but all right this should be back to normal now all right I think I actually have some caching saved, but uh, we can ch change those colors. Um, um, the goal, though, uh, is to uh, ch to to utilize the uh, these custom uh, CSS properties in your in your blocks, um, and make like. If you just add the uh, dash dash WP dash dash custom, and then you can use like your namespace uh, and mine's a little weird and then your block name and then then a property name, which would match. All right, so named namespace and block uh, and that can also be written as that uh, with a dash if you wanted. 
but um, this all like trickles down to your block and it can be overwritten if you want and like you want to have an option for users to override it but hopefully like i'm just giving you some inspiration for you know uh helping theme authors integrate with what you're doing um but that's like the big uh like presentation so i'll just stop sharing there but um so I see someone asked, uh, could you share your G uh, GitHub code with us? Um, absolutely. And I will link this in the chat. Uh, if I can remember the uh, URL. Uh, see, but uh, feel free to bring any questions in about, uh, about uh, doing this. Thank you, Justin. That's good. It's great. It's a great presentation. Um, I, don't, I didn't see any questions coming through chat, um, but um, yeah. Yeah. Um, someone was asked for the GitHub code and I just linked it. Mm -hmm. um, what is the best way to pull in a theme color palette as options in a block? Wow, they're coming up with the big uh, questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we use same color settings and a custom block. Um, all right, that is a, that is a topic, a, a, a huge topic actually, but I don't know, I may have uh, some example code. Uh, I'm going to look because that's, uh, yeah, it's actually uh, like, it, it's something we probably wouldn't be able to walk through completely um, just in this uh, presentation. Let's there are a couple see. of functions that are, yeah. So there's block editor get settings, get block editor settings mm -hmm. function in PHP. There's also something in the data store that you can get. But uh, yeah, yeah. To your point, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm looking for uh, one of my uh, looking for some example code because uh, I'm pretty sure I have some. I'm just trying to remember where it's at. Okay. Bringing and custom colors. Yeah, feel free to bring other questions there while I'm looking <laughs> through this. Um, I might actually have uh, an example in this plugin I was just looking at. Like edit block. Uh, All right, so yeah. Um, that is not the best example either. So we have built a reusable component that uses color paddock component along with the use select. Um, yeah, I think uh, for me, I've been using a uh, use setting and like targeting color palette that custom for a few things. Um, can somebody pull up the use uh, link to use setting? Let me see. I can get it. All right. The hook? Yeah, uh, should be. Yeah, use setting. Yeah, under block editor. Yeah, I got it here. Uh, just drop it in the chat. Yeah, you can pull up uh, like use setting color. And then you can like uh, settings are weird. Uh, like you can go like target color dot palette dot default, which would be like the core, then color dot palette dot theme, or uh, color dot palette uh, dot custom, um, and gets uh, like user defined colors. Um, there may be easier ways uh, to like a, the uh, gradients. There's also a gradient drop down. Uh, I think it's still, it's maybe still experimental or use multiple origin colors and gradients is a long uh, quote name. It's, a, it's experimental at the moment. Um, and, but I've been using it anyway. Yeah, it depends on the uh, specific use case.
All right. All right. Uh, I'm bringing I mean, uh, any questions don't have to be uh, related to like what we presented either. Um, like we're we're here to talk blocks and uh, or anything related to it. Or maybe somebody else has a way of doing the same thing in a, in a, in a different way. You know, I presented one solution to a problem. There's undoubtedly mm -hmm. another way to do it. So if anybody knows uh, of different ways to do things. But yeah, as Justin says, you know, we can, uh, if you've got questions outside the scope of what we've been uh, covering, feel free. Yes. Um, well, you guys, these are perfect presentations. No one has any questions. You've yeah. explained everything perfectly <laughs> and clearly. So well done. Well done. Yeah. I'm still looking for like a color example <laughs> over here on the uh on the on the uh my laptop. And uh, I know I have some somewhere. Let's see, block editor. I'll get it. Oh, thanks, Tobias. <laughs> All so, right. Uh, I have one, I but it's using use select. Um, and it's very similar to what Anthony um, um, I'm trying to say. Uh, linked. There we go. That's the words I'm trying to say. All right. Uh, you can get all of the settings this way. I don't know what this is going to look like in the thing, but you can get all of the settings for the block editor um, by doing that. But that is my understanding of use select of use uh, use settings is that it, this would be doing that under the hood. So I'd recommend using the hook version rather yeah, than the, this this the select version. All right, I'm actually going to go back into like a sharing mode here. Um, so because I finally pulled up something. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so here is I'm actually doing this from a theme, by the way, um, which you can totally use WordPress scripts uh, from a theme. And uh, OK, so this is actually grabbing uh, the entire color palette right here. Uh, use setting. Uh, so just import it. Uh, from the block editor, uh, use setting. Um, what is um, this? Is actually a custom hook, uh, but this I'll actually uh, while we're at it, um, let's, I'll show you this feature. Uh, say group. Oh, not a, I meant hit group. And let's just type a little paragraph. Um, so what this feature is actually doing uh, for my theme is creating like a color selection thing so you can like change uh, change to whatever colors you want like really quickly uh, i've got more work to do on it um but like how i get the colors is entirely like just literally just one line of code and of course i have to you know turn it in uh like a format that I need uh, for elsewhere in the plugin. Uh, but actually, yeah, pretty simple just to grab all the colors at once. Um, hopefully, that uh, helps. Uh, I think it was Anthony's question. Uh, and I'll be, uh, I'm happy to share like uh, more code on that uh, also. Um, if you want to get, need to uh, ping me or anything later. Right, eight so, minutes left here. So, if anyone has yeah, questions about burning, anything eight, and everything, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, burning questions on your mind. Anything Gutenberg WordPress related. All right. All right. Well, so, in the meantime, uh, 
Uh, we do have one coming in, but in the meantime, uh, I encourage everyone to uh, read the developer blog. Um, all, all three of us have uh, written uh, articles on there, and I, we're in, I'm linking in the uh, chat room. But we're also looking for other developers and designers um, to like share their own knowledge uh, there. So. Uh, click the contribution page on there if you're interested, and you know, get in touch. All right. So what do you have a uh, new question uh, coming in? Not sure if it is a good question for this moment. Uh, have a task to set different default font sizes for different templates or post types. Hmm. So different. Uh, Okay, you could probably do that uh, with a filter. Um, Nick has, uh, Nick Diego has uh, some, a couple of articles and presentations on doing that. Um, I'm sure you could do it by post type or maybe even template. Are, are, you, are you talking? Uh, oh. Are you talking about, uh, let me go back to the question. Set different default. Uh, yes, setting different defaults. So, yeah, this would be like a theme JSON thing, right? Um, you want, um, like I said, talking about the headings block. Um, yeah, I think you could, uh, there's a couple of filters. You could probably do it uh, on the uh, editor side and you can do it on the, there's a PHP filter, I think, too. Look, um, I'm, I'm almost positive Nick wrote a, a, an article on the dev developer blog that covers this. Um, uh, theme, yeah, server side filters, yeah, here we go. I don't know that there's a specific example to um, the post type or templates, um, but I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm linking in the chats. Um, And hopefully this will be helpful. Um, but yeah, there are filters that where you can change the, like the theme JSON uh, data. Which uh, so if your style and say the heading block with uh, like you're say you setting a default font size of uh, you know 20 pixels or something for like the H1 block, uh, you should be able to filter that um, and change it on the fly. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to do that on a per post type basis or a template basis at the moment, um, but that would probably be the place to start. He's added another comment okay. to the, the chat. So there's a there's theme. A yeah, there's there's a theme .json php filter, but not sure if it's possible to alter the font size. For example, h1. Yeah. Um, hmm. Trying to think. Uh, yeah, I mean that was uh, what I wasn't sure on if it was possible to do that. Um, but yeah, if you try that filter. Um, I mean. Let me see. Uh, you have access to. Uh, I mean, you have access to PHP uh, user. You, know, you can check for users logged in. Um, I guess it would just be a matter if you have access to like the post type that you're wanting to do that on. Uh, do either of you know? Uh, like if that's available, like globally in the edit, like uh, the edit screen, um, like the post type name, for example. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> if getting more tricky. I mean, with I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends on if you're trying to to control whether it's an H one, H two, H three, four, five, six, whatever. That's um, completely configurable in the template, but. Um, yeah. If you're con trying to control the font size associated with an H1 for a post type, you might. Yeah. I'm not sure. You might be able yeah. to override some of the defaults. That I don't know. That I, this is theory, 
a theoretical, like if you use the approach that Michael did, where you wrap your template and then override some of the CSS custom properties. I'm not sure about specificity there. If if like if something's defined on the root and then the same name is defined in in inside an element, if it becomes if it overrides yeah. a class that uses I, it. Yeah. I uh, kind of like uh, semi-related to this is I want to encourage us to start uh, like as designers to stop thinking about design in these like huge, like I want to change it for a post type or I want to change it for a template uh, like on these like uh, let's start thinking about like design in terms of like components, like smaller bits. So, like, um, and I know sometimes you have to change things per post type per um template or, or so on sometimes sometimes you can't get around that um but I, when i'm designing now i approach things much differently than say at that like like top level um, i'm i'm looking at it from more of an a, a, a smaller level um there may be times where like for example i may add um like a custom block style for a group or something if i want to style a a section and that might set uh, all the default like you know, font sizes and so on for like this one section. Um, I think like in terms of like the block editor, we we have to think like in, when we're re designing, we don't know where that block's going to end up. So we want to like for styling at this top level. Sometimes um, it's not like the ideal it's, uh, experience there. Um, I would design. Uh, I'm I'm starting at the block level for for everything. Um, and it's a little, it's a different approach than like, uh, you know, 20 years ago when I first started learning web development, you kind of designed everything like this top down and, and now it's more atomic, uh, is, is the, uh, another word for it. And that's like kind of getting way off topic because sometimes you just need to do what you're asking, uh, change things, um, for one, uh, for one, uh, specific scenario. Um, but m maybe it helps like you rethink your approach, uh, like just kind of go back to the drawing board a bit. Um, if like you don't find, if we don't find a solution for this or you don't. Um, um, but I will, uh, I'll actually look into like do some like, like real world, like testing with this. Uh, if you don't mind pinging me on uh, Slack or Twitter, or anywhere, I will be happy to, to dive into that a bit. All right, so we're under the 10 minute mark. Um, all right. You guys working on anything uh, fun you want to share? Right. Yeah, we have about nine minutes left. Just a quick reminder that if you to save the chat before the meeting, you have nine minutes. You have plenty of time. But just uh, if you want to save the links and everything in the chat, just make make sure to save it. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Should we just leave it open for the next nine minutes and see see if anyone if any questions pop up or give people nine minutes gonna, back. Yeah, sure. Hit us with your yeah. questions. Yeah, we can cut it early too if we can give it a minute or two. Um, sure. Yeah, sure. If there's nothing else, I guess we can uh, give people back eight minutes of their day. Yeah. Just a quick reminder that WordPress is open source, and you're, if you're interested in contributing, you can figure out how to do that in whatever way suits you you don't have to be a developer you you can do you don't have to write code you can there's lots of ways so just hit up make.wordpress.org um and uh all are welcome and and uh yeah great yeah thanks for coming everyone yeah and thank you yeah. to uh justin and michael for to you know uh, putting these great presentations together and uh sharing all the good infos with us today yeah, thank you for hosting ryan Oh, anytime.